Hey, I'm Matt. Welcome back to another RSD tutorial. Today we're going to be doing our very first Figma tutorial, and we're going to be looking at how to create the glass pane effect. It's pretty trendy right now, and it's super simple to make. So let's go ahead and hop right into the program and get it done. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, uh, this time the file is on Figma community. So just go ahead and hop over there and download that, or you can use the form in our blog as always. Alright, so today what we're going to be looking at is how to create this glass pane effect in Figma. It's super simple, five, maybe six steps, and we'll have it done. I uh, figured this would be a nice one to start off our Figma tutorial with because it gives us an idea of how to use our panels here on the right and our layers here on the left. Kind of give you a walkthrough of the whole program while actually completing a project. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. Alright, so for step number one, what we're going to want to do is create a rectangle that are at these dimensions. I'm only using these dimensions because it fits in my artboard better. Uh, it's completely up to you, whatever you want to use. For the most part, all of this stuff will carry over to whatever size you end up using. So we're going to make it at 560 by 350 pixels. I'm going to come up here to my rectangle tool, click that, and click inside my artboard. And you'll see it automatically generates a square for me. I can come over here to my dimensions and change my width to 560 and my height to 350. I'm just going to pull that back into the center of my board here. And then we're going to add a corner radius of 20 pixels. And that's just right here underneath our dimensions. Go ahead and add 20 there and hit enter. And now you can see we've gotten rid of those uh, hard 90 degree angles on the corners. And we're ready for step two. So for step two, what we're going to want to do is add a linear gradient going from our top left of our rectangle down to our bottom right. But to give it the glass effect, we're going to vary the opacities from 60 to 60% 60 to 8%. And we're going to use the exact same fill color we have here. So this gray was uh, the default for Figma. But what we're going to do is click our fill color here, change this drop down from solid to linear. And now you can see my two nodes are there. Uh, telling me, you know, this is at full opacity and this one's at zero and what direction it'll be in. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the color to our EF, EF, EF on that one. Change that opacity to 60%. And then I'm going to click my bottom node, change that to the same color, EF, 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 at 8%. And now I'm going to come in and change my direction from this top left to the bottom right. And as you can see now with this grading applied, it definitely looks a lot different than our solid gray. And it's kind of giving you the effect that it's, uh, you know, it, obviously it's see-through because our opacity is very low here, uh, but it's starting to look a little bit more like glass. And we can move on to step three. Now step number three is probably gonna be the easiest step in this whole thing, other than step number one where we just created a rectangle. Uh, for this one, you're going to make sure your rectangle is selected. And we're going to come over to our right-hand panel and add an effect. Uh, drop shadow will always be the default uh, effect that's added. We can just click this drop down and change it to background blur. And then click our sun icon, which opens up the intensity. And we're going to change that to 55. Uh, notice you didn't see anything really happen here. Uh, you will in the next few steps, but that just sets us up for our end result. Okay, so for step number four, what we're gonna to wanna to do is add a stroke around our rectangle. And what this will do is kinda of give it almost like a beveled edge uh, or a little bit of dimension, like thickness. And it's really gonna take this seemingly you know, flat design and give it a little bit more dimension and go from looking like a regular piece of plastic paper to an actual like piece of glass. So with our rectangle selected, I'm just gonna come over and choose stroke, add one to it. Uh, with it being black, you probably can't see it, so I'll just change it to that same purple. Uh, we're going to increase this thickness to 2, and then make sure that it's set to the inside, so it's to the inside of the rectangle we've, we've drawn. And I'll deselect or click off here so you can actually see where it's at. But we don't want to leave it purple. We're going to change it to the exact same fill color as our rectangle, which is a linear gradient, you can see here. So I'm just going to click that purple again, do this drop down to linear, and then change this to our, where did it go? The EF, EF, EF at 8%. 
and then we're gonna change this other one to the same thing, but at 60%. And then I'm gonna drag this corner down, the same corner it relates to, and drag this one up to the other corner. And if I deselect this, you can see, let's zoom in a bit, it's a lot more apparent on this side than it is on this side, where the gradient is falling off. And that just adds a little bit more, like I said, dimension to the whole thing. And we can move on to step five. Okay, now that we're on to step five, this is gonna be our last and most rewarding step. Um, we've got our gradient, or our rectangle here, with, you know, our gradient fill and our gradient stroke. And all we're gonna do is add some objects behind it. I'm gonna grab a circle. Draw me a circle here. I'll duplicate that. Make one a little smaller. Drag it in, kind of hang it off the edge a little bit. And we'll do one more giant one on this side. And I'm gonna change the fill of these to just some pretty bright uh, colors. So we can see them a little bit better and it's not that dull gray. And I'll change this one to, there we go. Now I'm just gonna use my command and brackets to bring them down below. And as you can see with our glass above it, that blur that we did in uh, step three is really starting to show. And it, that's what really sells the glass effect is the blur of this uh, main rectangle layer. It's really that simple. Like I said, five steps. And no matter what you put this over top of, that effect will work. So we can put it over top of our text here, put it over top of our number in the corner, and it's always like that blur. You can change the size of it, change the shape of it, all that good stuff. That's all there is to it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you did, please leave us a like and consider subscribing here on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Instagram for more tips and tricks. And subscribe to our newsletter for all things RSU. I'll catch you in the next one.